Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power. And hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. What is your ambition? What is the reasoning and what drives your desires? I'm telling you, whether you're going to read James or not, you're going to hear a lot about it from me because it's so awesome. And today was all about what is the basis of that ambition. What is ambition, you ask? Because, you know, we use these words and it makes sense to stop and really kind of look them up. Because I didn't really look at ambition in this way. Ambition applies to the desire for personal advancement or preferment and may suggest equally a praiseworthy or an inordinate desire. So ambitions can be good. As a synonym, it can be an aspiration, like striving after something higher than oneself, right? But you can also have an inordinate desire. Okay, let's go to James. James 3, chapter 13, whoops, verse 13 through 18. Beloved, who among you is wise and understanding? Let him show his works by a good life in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. Wisdom of this kind does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exists, there is disorder and every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconsistency or insanity. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Whoa. (laughs) I'm going to use an example because I'm a bit Late on my podcast today, I stayed up last night. My husband went out to hunt in Nebraska, and he watched one of these shows. You know how many Netflix series there are out there, all these streaming services. We don't watch that much TV. But when we do, it's usually kind of sports stuff that my husband likes. So most yesterday, we watched Daytona 500, the biggest left turn in like the history of the world. And it was fun, lots of crashes, but it's not really my thing. I do that for him. Now, we got into this Yellowstone, and mind you, I have changed the way in which I look at how I ingest information and entertainment. So I used to record Days of Our Lives, that soap opera, Oh my gosh, it had to have been close to 30 years because I started watching it when I was in high school. And yes, I recorded it every day. It was on my VHS tape and now my DVR. And 
So about, I don't know, three years ago, I would binge watch it during an afternoon. And I was like, after I talked to someone, and I don't know, Corinne, if you're listening, it was a woman who had asked me to come out and speak. And she was telling me that she watched it all the time. Then she asked me, oh, is Stefano still on there? And, I'm, and at that time, I think he was, or it was just about ready to pass away or whatever. But she said, I don't watch it anymore just because it supported everything that I disbelieve. And I said, wow, like that was a moment that I had to say, okay, wait a minute. A soap opera really is nothing but lies and deceit and cheating and sex outside of marriage and embezzlement and murder. I mean, come on, that's really what it is. And that is also what a lot of these streaming services are. So Yellowstone, by the way, I stopped watching Days of Our Lives. My husband almost fell over. He's been with me for 20, what, 21 years? <laughs> fell over almost. But gets it because he's like, yeah, I just look at that and I think how senseless and silly that is. And I'm like, well, honey, you kind of have your own little senseless, silly things too that I think are, but I just don't need to watch that stuff anymore. So how does this Yellowstone show tie into this whole thing. So Yellowstone is a rancher and I've exposed myself to this whole ranching life. I went out to Nebraska for the first time. I met where my husband has hunted since the day I met him. Every year, the week before Thanksgiving, he hightails it out to Nebraska and hunts. I've never met these people, don't know the lifestyle, got exposed to it, went out to branding where they're on horses and they're lassoing the neck and lassoing the feet. And it was so weird to me. I mean, I kind of really felt bad for the animals, but I also know that, wait a minute, this is how I eat my meat. I am a meat eater. And I, I just had to just take it in and understand a different aspect of the world that I'm not exposed to. So it's Kevin Costner. He has like, I think, 100,000 acres of land. And then there's another man who is on an Indian reservation who is kind of like the mayor, I guess, of that Indian reservation who is partnering with another guy to take up that land to build a golf community and a, co and a club and a neighborhood. And then there's another person who's trying to come in and do something even bigger, build an airport and a ski resort. And so as you look at all of this, and there's a lot of murder. <laughs> it's all justified because it's protecting what you own. And there are a lot of relationships and a lot of hurt and a lot of brokenness. And it hits me deep when I watch this. I cry. But what it's teaching me, instead of me walking away, it is teaching me because there are moments in here where... They all, because someone tried to kill all of his cows by feeding him alfalfa, they dropped it out of planes and all of these cows died because they got bloat. And so they stayed out and they built a camp right outside by the water. And they're all living in tents. And they're all saying, this is what we should be doing. Instead of this incredible ranch with I don't know how many square feet and what is inside. It is a, a beautiful, beautiful home. It's not a home. It's like a castle for crying out loud in a ranch look. <laughs> but it's all about the soul and the sister who is so broken and so kind of evil in her thoughts, in her ambitions, in her jealousy, in her selfishness, looks to her brother's sister-in-law and says, you have a soul, like, don't let this place change that. So when we sit here and we think about what James just told us, I'm getting my glasses. <laughs> There's a long pause because I'm like, where are my glasses? I got to read that again. Okay. When James tells us, that if we have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in our hearts, don't boast and be false to the truth because that kind of wisdom doesn't come from God. It's earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. 
for where jealousy and selfish ambition exists, there is disorder and every foul practice. So you're going to lie. You're going to deceive. You're going to cheat. You're going to steal. You're going to possibly murder. You're going to do whatever you can. You're going to harbor these horrible feelings and thoughts against someone, if not your actions and your deeds, which are not going to produce the fruitful, beautiful, gentle, kind, loving deeds, words, and thoughts that you should have. So again, it's back to asking God to enlighten us to what he wants us to experience and to bring into our life. So while this Yellowstone thing, I could sit there and say, oh my gosh, I can't watch this. I can't watch this. Like, yeah, there's some sexual scenes in there. And I just look at him and I say, okay, hands up over the face, you know, over the eyes. (laughs) And he does. We just wait, you know, because he's not so good with the remote control fast forwarding it. So we just let it play out, you know. And of course, there's some horrible things with murder and all this. And it's not desensitizing me. As a matter of fact, it's super sensitizing me. It's affirming the fact that, yeah, living off the land, living in God's nature as much as possible. And don't you misinterpret that, anyone who's listening and is thinking about end times or Father Michelle Rodrigue or something like that. Do not think that I'm going off the grid. This was something that my husband and I talked about two years ago. We're going to Tennessee. (laughs) We're 45 minutes away from Nashville. So we're not far from real, real civilization. 20 minutes away from a pretty big city, town, if you will. But yeah, we're going to be out in the country on some land, growing some food that God's going to grow. And I can't wait. I really can't wait. But that was the wisdom given to me from God. What do I mean? Well, I wasn't there two years ago. (laughs) COVID happened two years ago. We lost two people that were close to us in our families two years ago. Well, one and two years ago. Within that two years, lots of things happened that made us realize the life that we were living was earthly. (laughs) And this wasn't even the word that I ever brought into our discussion because my husband wouldn't really get that. But ultimately, we came back to what God really wants us to do, and that is to live and love and connect with him and his creatures and nature And that's coming from him. That was from him. So when I watch Yellowstone, I ask the Lord to put in my heart teachable moments, right? So, for example, when that woman said, I would love to live here, this is how, can we just stay here forever? I'll look at my husband and I'm like, that's what it's about and that's what we're doing. I said, look at all this other stuff for money, money, money. And that's another comment. Everybody wants more and more and more. And they'll do anything to get more. That I quote out of that show. And that sticks with me. These are are things that we can take out of some of this horrific stuff that's out there. If you have a family that may be not on the same page as you and more connected to the world. But that's the difference between the ambition that's pure to live right, to live with God, with his wisdom and his understanding, asking him to constantly give it to you and fill you with it versus what this world tells you. So you can go down that rat race and do things, say things, think things that are totally demonic, not spiritual, and definitely not fruitful and righteous. 
So go back and read James again, the daily readings today. And I have a moment here that I just, my heart's been so filled. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to those who have donated to me. I cannot tell you how blessed I am. I mean, and then there are people also who have signed up to, I guess, I don't even know how you do it. It's on the, um, on the anchor podcast and they just donate some money every time the podcast goes. It's really cool. So I just want to say my heart is so full. Thank you so much. Thank you for those who have reached out for coaching and other help. I mean, this isn't just a financial thing. It's more about us walking together and being better people across the world. I'm telling you, if you're on the other side of the globe, like I had someone in Australia, we found a time that worked for us every week. It was early for her, (laughs) but she was an early bird. And, you know, we could have flipped it around and I could have made it early for me or late for me. But with technology, it doesn't matter where you are. Keep seeking God's wisdom. Keep having pure ambitions. And your thoughts and your deeds and your words will slowly follow suit. However, we need God. We need to be spiritual. When we have those other horrible ambitions of jealousy and selfishness, it's not spiritual. You can tell by the way you feel when you're jealous. Stop that. Immediately say, Lord, I cast out the spirit of jealousy in Jesus' name. We shouldn't be that way, and we should... Kick it to the curb the minute it happens. And anyway, back to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, because I am so grateful and so blessed for you all. You know, gosh, I wish one day we were all able to get in a room, (laughs) meet each other. I'm going to share the next places that I go because I know people are everywhere. So I am coming out to California next week. So if you're in Orange County or you know someone in Orange County and you might want to tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, go check Kendra out. There are two events that I'm doing on March 3rd and you can go to my KendraVonEsch.com website, click on the events tab and see all about it. Okay, I'm pacing around and I'm actually kind of running out of breath here. So I'm not going to huff and puff in the phone here. I'm going to let you back to your pure ambitious day, whatever ambitions you have today, may they be pure, may they be righteous, may they be spiritual and filled with the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Now go be love, because I love you all more than you could ever, (laughs) ever really know, you guys. I am so blessed. So thank you. Ah, gosh. Go find something more with God and have a blessed and inspired day.